I've had quite the week, you guys. So, no how-tos today, no top 10 li lists, nothing that requires too much thinking because I just have not had the capacity for it. But what I do want to tell you about today is my hiking plans for the future or for this year rather, in 2023. And before we get into that, I'll tell you why my week has been so crappy. <laughs> All right, so I live in an apartment building in Boulder and I am on the ground floor of said apartment building. So I was just sitting there Monday morning, last Monday morning, minding my own business, doing my work on my computer, when I hear a gurgling sound coming from the bathroom. I was like, that's strange. <laughs> and I go in there and it looks okay. So I was like, maybe I'm imagining things. Go back to my work, starts happening again. Go back in there. Next thing I know, uh, there is sewage bubbling up into my bathtub and into my toilet and overflowing my toilet. So obviously called my landlord in a panic who called the HOA in a panic. <laughs> and it turns out that the sewage lines in the apartment building ab above me, I guess, uh, probably froze causing a blockage. And because I'm on the ground floor, there's no one beneath me. All that sewage came up into my system, into my apartment. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it hasn't been a great week. <laughs> so I've basically been kicked out of my apartment for a while. Well, they deal with that because not only do they have to fix, you know, stop, stop the sewage from coming up into my apartment, um, because it overflowed over my toilet. By the way, it's not even like my sewage. It's like sewage from the apartments above me, apparently, or maybe my sewage plus their sewage. And it's not great. Anyway, so <laughs> it did that. And it also uh, came up onto the floor, which is attached to my bedroom. And there's a carpet on my bedroom floor. So they have to rip up the entire carpet, replace it. They have to take out a bunch of the drywall in the apartment, replace it. Um, I guess that's all to prevent black mold and because of water damage and whatever. And I live in a very tiny apartment. It's just like a one bedroom apartment. So if one room in the apartment is off limits, one bathroom is off limits, I, I can't be in there <laughs> basically. So I might be out of my apartment for a month, but I'm trying to look on the bright side I am doing a lot of dog sitting this month. You guys know that I dog sit to help fund my adventures. And I'm watching Claude the St. Bernard for a, a good chunk of the month. And he's like the sweetest boy. Claude, what are you doing, you goofball? Huh? What are you doing? And he lives in a beautiful place. That's where I am right now. This is a view from his house. So it's really not so bad. I've got a ski trip coming up in the middle of the month and I've only got a few days where I'm going to be truly homeless. And in that case, my friend Sharon has generously offered to take me in during those days of the month, actually considering moving in with her anyway to save some money again for future adventures. I've been living alone the entire time I've been in Boulder pretty much. It's been glorious. It's the first time I've ever gotten to live alone. I've totally loved it. But living alone comes with a hefty price tag. And I've got dreams and I've got ambitions and those things cost money. <laughs> so I'm considering moving in with Sharon um, a, a little later in the spring. So this is a good trial run. Um, but because she is being so kind and generous to me, I wanna give her a shameless plug. If you've been with my channel for a while, you might have seen the Colorado Renaissance video I did a couple of years ago. I went out there to help Sharon with her booth for a weekend and I interviewed while I, while I was there about her. Um, she makes jewelry out of historic timepieces. Like a lot of her pieces are over a hundred years old. So that's pretty darn cool. It's like steampunk. Anyway, I'm going to put a link down to her stuff in case any of you guys are steampunk fans and just want to check out the jewelry that she makes. It's really freaking cool. And I think I'm going to try to go back this summer 
to the Colorado Renaissance Festival again and probably make another video about it this year. So stay tuned for that. That'll probably be around June-ish. But yeah, so not that Sharon watches my channel, she doesn't, but Sharon, if you ever, for some reason, see this video, thank you so much. You are an angel and I appreciate you so much. Anyway, I'll put the link to Sharon's stuff down in the show notes. Okay, on to what you probably are more interested in, which is the hikes that I'm gonna be doing this year. I'm really freaking excited about what I have coming up in 2023. As many of you guys know, I was initially aiming for the PCT this year. I just feel like the life circumstances aren't right exactly at this moment. I had some pretty big family health scares in 2022. Um, recession, I'm in line for a promotion, and I'm just not financially where I want to be at yet in order to do the PCT. Plus, I really love my job. and. I'm ultimately hoping to get a leave of absence from my job. I didn't feel like the time was right to ask for that this year, but I am really hoping to ask for one in the future because I mean, my dream is I wanna do the PCT, I wanna do the CDT, not sure which one will come first, but whichever it is, I would really, really love to get a leave of absence in order to do that hike and just go back to my job afterward. First, it would alleviate a lot of stress. It was really tough for me being unemployed after the AT. And second, I just really like my job. So I, I would just really like to be there for a long time. And so that that's my ideal. So we'll see. My trail family is thinking about the CDT in 2025. So that might end up being my next long hike, if not the PCT. So we'll see. So anyway, because of that this year, I feel like I'm really being called to California. California is just, it's calling my name, you know, it's calling me there. And when you're getting that kind of call, you got to answer. It's what happened to me with the AT and that's what's happening to me with California this year. So this coming spring, I'm going to be hiking the Trans Catalina Trail on Catalina Island off of the coast of Los Angeles. That's a pretty short hike. It's about 38.5 miles. I'm going to do it in three days and two nights. And then I'm going to go see my amazing friend Tia from high school who lives in LA. So that's that's like a bonus. I'll get to both do the hike and then go see Tia. And then I'm also gonna be taking a few days Utah road trip this spring. I also just feel like the desert is calling me. I wanted to get some of that sweet, sweet desert sun to shake off the winter blues a little bit. So this spring, I might be going solo, but I might be bringing my friend Liz who came out to visit me on the Colorado Trail last year. So we'll see, but either way, I'll be doing that road trip. I'm planning to go out to Arches National Park, Goblin Valley State Park, um, Capitol Reef National Park. I've never been to Capitol Reef. Uh, Bryce Canyon and potentially one other park. I'll have about five days. Gonna be doing a lot of driving and a lot of hiking. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really excited. There's not gonna be any backpacking with that one. It's all gonna be car camping and day hiking, but I, I love Utah. It's just, it's so stunning. And I'm really pumped to get back there. And then my big hike for the summer is officially going to be the John Muir Trail in the Sierra in California. So this is sort of my PCT light, I guess. It's I'm going to be starting from the Inyo National Forest. I hope that I pronounced that correctly. It's sort of a back, back door entry into the John Muir Trail. You still have to get a wilderness permit, but it's not quite as intense to get a permit to start there as opposed to starting at the Whitney Portal or at Happy Isles in Yosemite. So I'm going to be starting in Inyo National Forest. It adds a little bit of mileage onto the hike. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how long the hike is with that backdoor entry into Inyo National Forest at um, Horseshoe Meadows. So I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's around 237 miles total. If you've done it or you happen to know the exact mileage from Cottonwood Lakes, please let me know. I would love, I would love to know. I, I was Googling earlier and I was like, I can't find a definite mileage for this. But anyway, I'm really pumped for that. Obviously going to be doing that. Going to take about two weeks to do that hike. I've heard it's a pretty tough one. So I'm going to be doing a lot of training, I think this spring and this summer going into that because I don't have a ton of time to do the hike. I don't want to use all my vacation days at once because then later in the fall, this one isn't confirmed, definite yet, but really good possibility. I'm going to be going down to Patagonia 
later in the fall. So those are my big plans for this year. Gonna be using a lot of my vacation time. Luckily, I have a lot built up because I never took any during COVID and I used to have a psychotic boss who did never let me take vacation days, but thankfully that life is long gone and now my boss is amazing. <laughs> so yeah, those are my plans for the year. I'm also, I'm sure gonna be doing some weekends and long weekend backpacking trips as well and I'll be sharing those. So stay tuned, but these are my big ones that I've pretty much got planned for the year. I'm really pumped. I think 2023 is gonna be a really good travel year, a really good hiking year, hopefully a really great year in general, <laughs> as I'm still kicked out of my apartment for probably the next month. But that's okay. I'm trying to look on the bright side here and I'm not gonna be paying rent for the time that I'm out of my apartment. So I'm like, well, you know what? That's just money that I can put toward my adventures this year because John Muir Trail is gonna be a little more expensive than the Colorado Trail because I'm gonna to have to fly out there, et cetera. And then obviously, if I, if I end up going to Patagonia, when I end up going to Patagonia, that's also gonna be more, more pricey than you know staying local. So just trying to put that in perspective and um, it's, it's really not so bad. Like Claude, especially, he's, re he's really saving my life right now. By the way, he's like looking at me through the window. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like somebody's watching me. Hi, Claude. So anyway, yeah, I hope it's gonna be a good year. Let me know down in the comments what you're going to be doing this year. I'd love to hear about it. Wish me luck on my apartment situation. And sorry, this video isn't my normal like how to and 10 things and blah, blah, blah. But I just figured I still wanted to put out a video this week in what I really got on my mind right now is the hikes that I'm going to be doing this year. So I wanted to share those with you guys, especially because people had been asking me at the end of 2022 and I didn't quite know yet what I was going to be doing. And now I do because I got my permits and campsites and things like that for the Trans Catalina. And I got my permit for the JMT and I'm starting to plan Patagonia with my friend Pika, who's really driving this trip forward. So yeah, here we are. I'll obviously be taking you guys along on all of those adventures. So if you're interested and you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Anyway, a little delayed, but happy 2023, everybody. And I'll see y'all next time.